this is this is nuanced. So I'm glad you asked. So you can't transfer inventory physically within FBA from one account to another. That's yeah. impossible. Yep. But you could be starting to sell on this tomorrow if you added it to your account now. So what you would do in an acquisition okay. situation, you'd be like, look, hey, we're going to buy your account. Don't have them do anything. You'll do everything yourself. And so you then choose whether you're going to um, sell down the F for you. The value of a review is $15 per review. So um, if you can buy this guy's business for 10 grand and you get over a thousand reviews, you're, 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 you're buying it well. Mm -hmm. um, I wouldn't be surprised if he would be willing to part for, for 10 grand. I wouldn't be surprised at all. Now, um, is it worth more than paying that? Absolutely. Um, and, and so what you might want to do is say, Hey, you know, we're really interested in, in, in the listings. Uh, you know, there's obviously a lot of opportunity you haven't explored. You don't have a trademark. You don't have content. You haven't optimized the listings. We, we're a sophisticated group and we think we could take your listing to the next level. Would you be interested in selling? And if so, what would be, you know, what would be a price to make you feel whole for the effort you put in? Yeah. And he's going to come up with some crazy number and he'll be like, <laughs> I want 50 K be like, well, um, you know, I don't think we would value it at that. Here's what we would value it at. And then give and say, look, we, we'd be willing to pay you $5 a review. And, yeah. and then based on that, we see these number of reviews. How would you feel about that? That's how I would negotiate with this guy based yeah. on what I see. One campaign, one product, shallow keywords. Okay. We've seen better success doing it that way. So like two or multiple three ad numbers. groups in a campaign or no. not even anymore. Typically one to one. Okay. Um, it's, right. it makes it harder to macro view it. That's the downside. So what you're going to end up doing is making some portfolios. So they create a portfolio. Should, uh, should we use more, uh, when you manage the ads, when you first launch, check it every three days, um, make negations. Once it starts optimized and it's over time and you're running 500 bucks a week on a campaign, you can check it once a week at that point. Um, but the, the negations, um, the standard of negation or the pausing, spend 20 to $50 on a keyword. It just, just depends on your particular um, risk tolerance. But after you've spent that risk tolerance and maybe you decide it's 35 is your risk tolerance, then you negate that and you um, add it as negation at the campaign level. Um, as your campaigns get sophisticated and you add lots and lots of depth, that's where the amount of management time comes in. And, and yes, there is no way to negate at the account level. You have to negate at the campaign level. Um, start okay. with, so you want to label, be, be sure to label all your campaigns. So companies that are like corporations that have been doing business for a long time prior to Amazon, this is probably the maybe number one, most frustrating area for them. It is ridiculously difficult to do inventory reconciliation. So, and it's because Fun. it's because there's 500 warehouses and they move the inventory constantly. And then you got returns coming in and they've got, um, damages and lost items and, and then the pending orders and the check-ins. And so it's just a giant mess. So the available inventory, this is easy to count on hard and good, fast numbers. No problem there. The inbound column is always suspect because inbound could mean you made a shipment and inbound could mean it's literally shipped. No way to tell the difference between the two from this view. Unfulfillable. This one's easy to understand. It's literally like a damaged good and it can't be sold or they've marked it unfulfillable because the item's expired or whatever reason they've marked it unfulfillable. And, th and then generally you do a return on those back to your warehouse or destroy them. But the reserved could be customer orders, could be a fulfillment transfer, which is the case on those 73, or it could be fulfillment processing. They could be measuring your item. They could be checking into the dock and they let it sit there for 30 days in FC processing. So really hot mess when it comes to the reserved status. There are countless numbers of inventory reconciliation reports that you can run on an account. 30 second synopsis. So if you have lots of returns, your, your condition of the CX help will go down. As soon as it hits very poor and stained, um, hits a certain threshold, they will suspend the listing. You simply go in there and hit relist. The listing goes back up immediately. And then in phase two, over time, as you build your traction, raising prices makes perfect sense. Yeah. It's a common tactic. Uh, additionally, supply chains are rough and supply is low. You can command a higher price. Um, some, some people will go, will launch at a higher price and then like throw a coupon on, um, others will just show up at a low price. I don't think, I don't think there's a, a one way fits all model on that question. So I would mm -hmm. just mix up your strategies and try all of them. Um, if you launch at a, a high price with coupon and nothing's happening, just lower the price. If you launch at a low price, nothing's happening, raise the price and add a coupon. 
just keep testing things and see what works. Cause like, like the flowers, I bet you couponing ain't going to matter. Right? <laughs> yeah. Right. But like other items it might like anything that's giftable, people are going to pay the premium for happiness, mm-hmm. anything that's utility. And I'm like, okay, do I, am I going to pay $4 for toothpaste? Uh, I, don't know. Mm-hmm. I usually only pay three fifty. That's when a coupon makes sense. Products on white photography, pal photography, go, go see how systematized those guys are. They are the best in the nation at this thing. Um, they have videos, guides, their e-commerce site. That's who you're competing with. And then when you look at their prices and you're like, crap, it's going to be hard to compete with that. Um, creative. Uh, so, so you guys have dealt with ticket sales. If you've never dealt with agency work or creative sales work, I'm going to tell you, the, the photo work is at the high end of like communication required to manage that flow. Mm-hmm. And if you think that the photographer is going to be the one to manage the flow, you are wrong. It's yeah. going to be you. Yeah. So, yeah. Yeah. So just, yeah. This, is, this is not a sexy business to run uh, yeah. in, in my opinion. Yeah. But All right. Other things that you pick a idea that mm-hmm. doesn't mean I'm right. It just means I'm sour on it. Sure. In addition to that, it, it, let give this guy a glass to, to, to take a picture of or a light and, and, and see if he knows how to take shots without glare and see how long it takes him. And it might take him the whole freaking day. And the reason I know that is because I've sold both and I've taken, and I've been on photo shoots. Yeah. Where it, like there are some items that you probably won't be qualified to do. Right. Like there's going to be a series of complications. If, if I were in your shoes, this is not a, a not a chaotic um, additional chaos. I would add to your plate. I would pass. That makes it. a lot of sense. That's good. Yeah. What I would do instead, though, is say, hey, your your job as a marketer versus an operator versus a financial, like, you know, divide those three out, depending on who's wearing what hat. And then the answers to your questions would be different. Um, Inventory management is more important than anything else, bar none. Uh, From there, PPC is probably second. And from there, third, I would say we start to get into more of the general optimizations. And then anything financial would be the bottom of the pile, because it's generally speaking, either you have money or you don't. Um, and like maintenance things and financial, like justifications and product expansions, always be launching new products. I don't think that's going to be a problem for you guys. Um, and, uh, running general health checks, um, trying to make sure your listings are functional, live, searchable. My name is Stephen Pope. I'm the founder of my Amazon guy. Every single person who goes to my Amazon guy.com and contacts us and fills out some information. I read every single one of those personally, and I will respond to them um, to help give you opportunities or options to help grow your sales on Amazon or solve a problem. So feel free to hit that subscribe button if you're not quite ready to hire us. Keep keep watching, keep listening. We'll keep adding value wherever we can. We're always on the lookout to tell um, stories about you know other Amazon sellers. So if you got a journey you want to talk to us about, we'd be happy to do that. Just send us an email to podcasts at myamazonguy.com.